The broken bones and the burns are almost three months old, but still visible. These men and women were making parts for iPads when a cloud of aluminium dust exploded, the second such explosion in less than a year at one of Apple's Chinese suppliers. They worry they'll be scarred for life, they tell me. Apple proudly displays a code of conduct for suppliers on its website. It says factories risk having their contracts terminated if they're unsafe or if they treat workers unfairly. But alleged breaches of the code are easy to find. At the same Shanghai factory where the explosion took place, there are claims that the working week is often well in excess of the 60-hour maximum that Apple demands. What's normal for people here? Most people work seven days a week. Twelve-hour shifts are the norm, people told us. Days off are rare. In a statement, Apple said... Every year, we inspect more factories going deeper into the supply chain and raising the bar for our suppliers. In 2011, we conducted 229 audits at supplier facilities around the world and reported their progress on our website. The factory itself denied that any employee works for more than 60 hours a week. Apple's slick brand image is at risk, of course, if it is seen to be failing to get suppliers to live up to the required standards. But on the day the new iPad is launched, consumers might also reflect on the difficult commercial reality now facing all the big electronics firms. These unemployed labourers are at these factory gates in the hope of wages that many in the West would consider a pittance. But, of course... If consumers do have moral qualms about pay and conditions in China, then they also want to continue paying rock-bottom prices for their gadgets. Those who make those gadgets see little prospect of real improvement. Apple's code of conduct couldn't save He Wen Wen from injury, nor has it won him more than the $700 compensation he's been given so far. John Sudworth, BBC News, Shanghai.